Hi everyone, welcome back to GameMakerCast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be finishing off the top-down shooter series. What's left is to make the player die, add some visual score to the game, and then finally a game over screen. So let's roll the introduction and get right into it. So the very first thing we're going to do is create an object to show the score to our player. So let's open up our objects and create a new object inside here. And what we're going to name this is obj ui score and we only really need one event here and we're going to be using the draw gui event and the reason we're using draw gui instead of just the draw event is because if i open up one of my rooms here you can see that our room is massive and the gui itself or the graphical user interface is just going to be this white square and we don't have to worry about the position of the camera and the xy coordinates because it's always going to be a static square where our camera is so what we need to do is we need to figure out the width of our graphical user interface. And luckily we have a display get GUI width. So we will use that. The next thing we need to do is reset our variables or reset our functions like image alpha and color, just in case we use them somewhere else. While we're resetting these variables, we'll also set our horizontal and vertical align to make sure that everything is going to line up. The next thing we want to do is just draw some text. We will draw some text with width divided by two the Y position of 30, and we'll just say score, and we'll pop in a string representation of our global.points. Now global.points comes from our object initialize, and we did that at the very beginning of the tutorial series here. So with this little bit of information here, we have to cast this as a string or else GameMaker will try to add a string to a number and you will get an error. Now let's add this object into our room here. So in level, doesn't really matter which one, I'll just say cursor, I'll come in here and I will place it in here. Now before we actually test our game, let's have our enemies give us some points. So we'll close everything and we will just look for an enemy object here and we want the parent enemy itself. And particularly, we want to go to the destroy event and what we want to do is add 10 points onto every enemy we destroy. So we can say global.points is plus equal 10. However, I want it to get more points the further down you go. So I'll say global plus 10 times the maximum value between one and global dot level. Now the reason I'm using the max function here is because if global dot level is zero, 10 times zero will give you zero points. So we don't want that to happen. So it says, give me the max number between one and whatever the level is. So if the level is zero, we'll still get the number one. So it'll be 10 times one, which is 10 points, and then so on and so on, so that we will always have the correct amount of points. Now with this little bit of information, we should be able to save our game. We should be able to run our game. And let's see if we can find an enemy in order to kill it quickly so we can see if our score is working here at the top. There we go. So we'll kill, oh my. Can't hit that guy, we'll kill this guy. Come on, come on. And you can see we went up 10 points. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is make sure that we can kill our character here. So let's close the game and let's open up our character. Now with the character, we're gonna open up the step event and we're gonna go down to where we have hit points right here. So right now we're checking to see the current hit points and then just lurking between when it's supposed to go. Well, what we want to do is we want to say if our hit points next is less or equal to zero, then basically our character is dead. So we're just going to say room go to and rm room over. And this is something that we're going to put in in one second here. So once our hit points is zero, we're going to go to a new room and let's duplicate the menu as it's pretty much the cleanest and just rename it to rm game over. So once we open up this particular room, let's clean up some of the assets as we don't need these. Uh, actually, let's keep the background. So we'll take rid of everything and then we will move the buttons down to the bottom. Now let's delete the play button because we will come back to that one. Now, before we do anything, let's actually make another object in here. So we'll do create a new object and we're going to name this one object game over underscore score. And once again, let's add a draw GUI event. Now we're pretty much going to do the same thing as we did with this UI score here. So let's copy everything and close my room. So we have more code here and in the game over score, we're going to paste that in. Now, the only thing I need to do is I need to have the width and I also need to have the height. So let's make sure we grab those two variables there. And what we want to do is have the room width divided by two and then the, uh, sorry, the graphical user interface divided by two and then the height divided by two. And so let's say, instead of saying just score, we'll say game 
over and slash n in game maker 1.4 you used to be able to just do the number sign however we should be using slash n here then we'll say your score is then pass in the global dot points now we need to make sure that we add this into our game over room that was the object game over score and we'll just put it up here and remember it doesn't really matter where it is because it's going to use this white box to draw something right in the middle here now the final thing we need is a replay button now i said we couldn't actually use the play button because if we look at it we're just going to the next level we need to actually reset some of our variables so let's duplicate this and rename it to replay and make sure that we open this particular replay button here i'm going to close everything to kind of tidy everything up and on left release this is where we want to do some of those resets if we go into our object in it it's actually just copy everything that we have here the level the points all the way down to the randomized character and in our new object we'll just paste that in so whenever we click on the replay button it's going to reset everything generate a random character and then go back to that level room so that means that in our game over we can come over here and we can click on replay and we could just paste it in here at the top all right so let's run a game and let's fast forward a bit to see if i can get some points and then die and check out our game over screen all right so there you have it uh, i wasn't very good i only got 40 points but you can see we have game over your score is 40. now the one thing i did notice is my cursor is not here so let's fix this up before we actually end this episode so if we go into the room level, you can see that we have a cursor object here. And when we check out the actual cursor object, you can see that uh, in the trade event, what it is is it, it set our cursor to see our none. So this is a simple one. All we need to really do is we know that we're using the game over score only in this particular room. So let's add a create event. And instead of saying see our none for the window cursor, let's just use the pointer. Or is it hand? Which one is it here? We'll see our default shirt. Good enough. All right. So when we run our game again, let's quickly hit play and see if we can find an enemy that will kill us. And now you can see that we have the cursor back. And when I hit play, it switches to what the cursor should be. Anyway, so the Top Down Shooter series is completely done. I hope you enjoyed following along and creating this game with me. I can't wait to start the next series, and I'll see you then. I'd like to thank you all for watching the series and supporting me on YouTube. In addition to those who are supporting me through Patreon, and a special shout out to the following in no particular order. Angel, Annie, Ashby, Derfold, Edward, Ian, Paul, Victor, and Ville. Once again, thank you everybody for supporting me, and I can't wait to see you in the next videos.